Can you hear me all right? If I talk like this, this is my normal tone of voice. So can, you, can everybody hear that? Because I just should not deal with the microphone. Good, that's even better. Well, let me get rid of this. Oh, Jesus. So, off to a good start. OK, good. Well, let me, you, we all remember Building 19. Well, this was the announcement that uh, Gene fa failed to make. <laughs> um, you remember Building 19? It started up in the old Hingham shipyard in one of those great cement buildings that were made to withstand 200 pound bombs from the Japanese and the Germans. And um, Jerry rented that and started a small business in, there. And he had been working for a couple of years when he put an ad in his circular saying he wanted someone to help him do this. Do, do this circular. In the, what he did is cut pictures out of magazines and put them together and write up what the prices of things were and hopefully got it published. So he wanted someone to help him with that. And Rosie, my wife, saw the ad and said, you should go in. So I went in. I went in around 5 o'clock after school. And uh, I brought my resume. Yes, you know, just, I was on the humor magazine at college and I drew pictures for the Quincy Ledger at one time so I had a fabulous resume and Jerry took one look at it and said I'm not interested in your resume I want to know if you can draw pictures I said oh yeah sure so he says draw a picture of that um, vacuum cleaner all brought up against the wall so I sat down and drew a picture of it and I gave it to him and he says well that doesn't look like an ad I said you didn't tell me to make an ad so I went back and I put in the features, you know, it has a handy on off switch and it plugs into the wall, sucks up dirt and that stuff. He says, and I showed it to him, and he said, well, that's no good. He said, you've got to make it interesting. You've got to have some humor involved. And I'm getting sick of this about this time. So I drew, I drew the picture of Jerry getting sucked up into the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and he thought that was all right. So now he said, let's, but how do I know this isn't just beginner's luck? And he says, I have a table of things over here you have to draw. So I drew them and drew them and drew them. I finally got out of there around 9 o'clock. And uh, when I came home, I told Rosie, the, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get that job. There's too many people looking for it. And uh, the test that he gave me was too involved and difficult. And he's got a flock of people that's looking for this job. And besides, I'll never even get the test back because he's busy. So I did get it back, though. It came in the mail. It was the next mailer. And he still owes me for that mailer. <laughs> so he hired me. And uh, many years later, I asked, how many other people applied for that job? He said, you're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember old Building 19, and it was wicked fun in the beginning. And what, what made it great is that Jerry was wicked busy. He had to go and find stuff to sell, and he had to deal with people. And I was sort of left to do the cartoons and the ads. And I had to show it, show it to him when I got done with him. Well, um, I, hang on, hang on. There it is. This was an iron hibachi stove from made in Japan. So I drew it up and I showed the features and all that stuff. And he showed it to him and he says, well, that's no good. Which is usually what he said. He said, that's no good. He says, you've got to have a joke involved or there's something that's personal, something that will involve people. All right, so I went back and I said, uh, from those wonderful folks who brought you Pearl Harbor. <laughs> And there's a Japanese warlord saying, we have ways to make you buy, Yankee. <laughs> now, um, down, in, down south, in a fa they had a factory for men's clothing. And uh, they made the suits 
suit coats and vests in one factory and made the pants in another factory. Now the pants factory burned to the ground. So this company was stuck with a lot of suit coats and vests with no pants to go with them. So naturally, Jerry bought them. <laughs> and the merchant who was in charge of men's clothing came by and said, now I'll tell you how we do this. I'm already pissed off how we do this. What, you know, if you knew anything, you wouldn't be working for Billy Knight anyway. <laughs> So he says, this is how we're going to do this. We're going to tell the customers that it's a new men's fashion to wear a sport coat and a vest and a contrasting pair of pants. And I said, how many people do you know that get their fashion tips from the Building 19 Circle? <laughs> I said, no, that's not the way we're going to do it. We're going to do it my way. And so we started to draw it. It says, men's two-piece suits. Suit coat, vest, no pants. <laughs> now we sold them out and it was a very popular sale. And um, it was such a popular sale that in a year later, they had another fire in the pants factory and we had to run it all again. And when I used to go out to talk to people, I would ask, um, did any, does anyone did, had anyone taken advantage of this sale? And the guy's hand goes up and he said, I bought six of those sets. I said, six of those sets? He said, yeah, well, I had to do with my business. I said, what kind of business are you in? He says, I'm a funeral director. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the ad that made all the difference. This came very early in the career of Building 19. Um, as you remember, uh, John Hancock Building, all the windows fell out of the John Hancock Building. It got really dangerous in 1971. You couldn't drive by the building and the glass would fall on your car. Jerry called me in one day for a serious discussion. He said he needed my advice, and I said to myself, well, at last, you know, he wants advice from me because I'm a school teacher and I know everything. <laughs> I can really be a big help to him. He says, well, I have the opportunity to buy the glass that fell out of the John Hancock building and I, 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 should I buy it? I said, well, not so fast. I want to know what are you trying to sell it for? He says, it's a good question. I think I got to get $100 a pain. So I thought, I said, well, I don't know anyone that's building a skyscraper in their backyard. <laughs> But if I did, I wouldn't recommend this glass because it's got the world's worst uh, reputation. Nobody would ever do it, use it. And besides, $100 is a lot of money. He says, don't buy it. He says, it's too, this is also had happened many times. He said, no, it's too late, I already bought it. <laughs> and it's your job to sell them. So I'm thinking in my head, well, we could say John Hancock Glass, antique, uh, made, you know, founders of America, did that sort of thing, making a nice old-fashioned colonial type ad that would have a picture of John Hancock's. And he said, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, you can't mention John Hancock in the ad. <laughs> so I went out and I did an ad that looked something like this. And he says, well, that's no good. He says, you can't tell it came out of John Hancock. And I said, well, but you said you can't mention John Hancock. He says, no, you can't mention John Hancock, but you've got to be able to figure it out. So I went back and I wrote some copy that said, we can't guarantee that this glass will stay in your skyscraper. <laughs> but if it falls out, we'll sell you the plywood to cover over the hole. <laughs> and I signed it in the manner of John Hancock. So he liked that, we put it in the globe, and the next day I got up in the morning and saw the morning globe, and it's on the front page. <laughs> now, you don't put ads on the front page, but he's on the front page, and the headline said, John Hancock, glass sold to building 19. So now I know we're in trouble. So I go to Jerry and said, we're in trouble, right? The, we, the John Hancock, they found out about it, they're gonna sue you. He said, yeah, they're gonna sue us. He said, but, I found out something last week. He said, John Hancock is suing the construction people. And the construction firm is suing the glassmaker. And the glassmaker is suing the architect. And the architect is covered by John Hancock insurance. <laughs> so I said, we'll be long dead before this ever comes to trial. 
Now, oh, now that was plastered all over the country. AP picked it up and put it in every newspaper in town, in, in the country. Now, we don't get a lot of customers from the West Coast or from Chicago or, or even from Marshfield. <laughs> But we, what we do get is people who read the paper and see that there's somebody that lives in Massachusetts that will buy damn near anything. <laughs> so the telephone began to ring off the, off the cord. And so he, a guy called Jerry and said, I can sell you some ride-on lawnmowers that you can turn around and sell for just $70 each and make a handsome profit. And Jerry says, they're, they're seconds, aren't they? They're broken. No, absolutely first quality. Everyone works beautifully. If it doesn't work, I'll take it back. But if you buy these, you can sell them. Right on lawnmowers that you can sell for $70 a piece and make a profit. So Jerry says, that's fine. I'll take all you got. And sure he did. <laughs> it was a wonderful piece of German engineering. It was, uh, it, it worked. It was perfect. If you had a lawn as big as this room, you could do it in about a month. <laughs> it went about 0 0.1 miles per hour. And you had to pedal your ass off to get it to move. <laughs> so it was great for those people who wanted to get in shape, but it wasn't great for people who wanted to mow their lawn. Uh, and we, Jerry, when we closed up, when Jerry closed up the business, he still had some left. <laughs> now, people say, where do you get your ideas? We, one of the things that we did is we made a circular, and a circular that you'd see, you'd get in the Globe and in the Herald and in your local newspaper, and you could subscribe to it. <laughs> so it was out there a lot. And what you see in the circulars in the newspapers today, on the front page, they put their best buys, and it's usually in color, with their best buys on the front page. Well, we did something different. We put jokes on the front page, the whole front page. And this is a classic Building 19 joke. He's putting his granddaughter to bed, and she says, why do they make so many stupid people? And Jerry says, well, honey, somebody's got to pay retail, <laughs> which, which is really the motto of Building 19. Uh, now, so I'm going to show you some covers that we had. We had a unique way of announcing that we were going to open a new store. Don't get it, okay? Um, oh, this is a good one. Now, these, these are snap coats or house coats that people used to wear many years ago. My mother told me they were called house coats. And everybody wore them in the 20s and 30s. Maybe some people still wear them today as they do the housework around the house. I know that whenever we advertised them, we sold them out. Everyone loved them. So I did an ad in the fashion of 1930s. My mother told me that these were called Hoover coats, or ho ho no, Hoover, what they call? Dresses. Hoover dresses, yes. And they were named after Hoover dresses because they were in the 30s and President Hoover was the president at the time. So I tried to write a speech for President Hoover and there's a picture of him in the top of the ad and it says Hoover is saying, my fellow Americans, it is my belief that prosperity is just around the corner and until that time when Americans can expect to have two cars in every garage and a chicken in every pot, the least we can do is properly clothe our women folk. <laughs> Accordingly, I have asked our country's fashion experts, who in my opinion are the best in the world, to design a simple yet stylish frock for the women of our great nation. An inexpensive working dress that will conform to the Christian standards of modesty, yet allow the fair sex the freedom to accomplish the work that has been traditionally theirs, that of caring for the home and its babies. Can you imagine how that would go over today? <laughs> I went on to say some of the jobs that people can do with this is vacuuming, ironing, washing the clothes, dusting, cutting wood. <laughs> and I went on and on. Well, now, the lady that was in charge of these uh, frocks came in and said, that ad was terrible. That was awful. I hated that ad. I said, how'd you make out? <laughs> 
Well, we sold them all out, but I hated the ad. <laughs> I don't want you to ever write an ad like that again. It had no fashion to it at all, and this was Beth. <laughs> Beth was a fashionista. She, would, she knew about good clothing. So sure enough, it sold out. She bought a whole bunch more, and she came back, and I had to do another ad. It had to be different. So I referred to my Fredericks of Hollywood. Um, <laughs> And I love the copy in this. It says, I sell out every time. Saucy ladies coffee coat and binkies. One of the ladies says, hey, love puppy. You look like you could use some coffee. Hot and strong. The kind men like. And the girl says underneath, go ahead, ask me why they call them binkies. The top one, it says, it, uh, it slips all the way to the floor. The other one says, pulls off over her head. <clears throat> this one, it says, in accordance with uh, Building 19's deep respect for America's family values, you must be over 21 years of age to purchase one of these highly <laughs> provocative costumes. So, of course, Beth came in the next day and she says, that's even worse than the first day. <laughs> So I said, how did you do? He said, well, we sold them out, but it was a terrible ad. <laughs> and sure enough, a couple of months later, she bought more. Now, she said, don't make it like the first ad. Don't make it like the second ad. Now, this was during a presidential uh, race, and you'll see this was the next one. So it says, Democrats, <laughs> Democrats wear caftans, and Republicans wear dusters, and real men wear boxers. <laughs> This one didn't do as well. <laughs> but I had a good time with it. Actually, those, uh, those things will sell out no matter what. Women love them. They just want to admit they love them. Here's a Jerry item. Now, we used to call certain items Jerry items, because he, he had a faulty theory that if he bought bad things from people, they would love him and remember him and give him good things. No. They loved him and remembered him as a sucker. <laughs> and this is one of the things that he bought. It's a wooden tie made out of beads. And uh, the beautiful part about it is that when you spill soup on it, it goes straight through to your shirt. <laughs> but it's air conditioned. It's not stuffy like that's a jerry item. That did not sell well, even at $1.99. Here's an even worse item. Nobody even knew what it did. This, this is, so I tried to figure out what it was. It was on my desk, and I could not figure out what it was. So advertising, you, the idea of advertising is you play on people's fears. So I tried to show a guy who's awake at night because he's, one, he's afraid that his fax machine is not protected from disruptive and destructive electrical disturbances. And if you bought one of these at $2.99, you'd be safe. Well, I don't know about that. These didn't sell very well either. Here's a, you, one of the things I like is the photos you see in the store. When you buy, excuse me, not photos, when you buy frames in a store, there's always a picture of some beautiful family or a beautiful person or Ida Lupino or somebody in there. And so I wanted to point out, I went around, searched around and get some different types of photographs to put in my frame ad. And here we have the sisters that are armed. They all have guns. <laughs> this is a nice picture of Lizzie Borden. <laughs> this is the um, one of the leader of the Hatfields and McCoys clan. Now, here's the thing. Nobody knows this. Nobody reads this and gets it. Nobody recognizes Lizzie Borden. Maybe two college professors would know who that was. But Butler and O'Connor and I got a big kick out of it. By the way, Butler won the prize for the most outrageous title of any ad we, of stuff we ever had. We got a shipment of New Testaments in. We wanted to sell the New Testaments for a dollar, for a whole New Testament. And the headline that Butler came up with was, Jesus Christ, what a bargain. <laughs> That's absolutely the greatest, the greatest headline in the world. 
Um, my motto, of course, I went to Jerry with this. I said, the idea is the words are more important than the pictures. The words come first. Once you come up with some good words, you can draw some good pictures. But if you just don't, if you don't have any words, you become a fine artist. Like, <laughs> I have two fine artists. And they don't deal with words. They draw beautiful pictures that you can figure out without words, which is, makes it tricky. Anyway, that's my motto. So you'll notice that as we go through here. For instance, here's Jerry bought this thing, which you know what it's like when you go to the doctor's <laughs> office and you sit on the thing, and then there's paper underneath it, right? And he began to think. It could be good paper for kids' art projects and a drop cloth and weed-free mulch and a lot of good ideas. So he bought a whole bunch of this. And, but the words are, Physician's Platform Paper Protector Prevents Patients' Posterior Pollution. <laughs> Patent pending. <Yeah. laughs> I was very proud of that. Um, what else? Do we, do we have anything else good? Uh, that's all right. Um, oh, this is one that you got to. Jerry, we got this Yankees thing. And the words, you see this is a, Warm, a Yankee warm-up jacket. And um, the, the words say, these partisan warm-up pullovers showed up in our warehouse. By the way, this is, you know, when you do an ad, you're supposed to be nice to the customers. And, you, you, and you're also supposed to say that this is an excellent bar bargain. And these are high-quality stuff that we're trying to sell. And you should really want to buy it. Listen to this copy. These partisan warm-up uh, pullovers showed up in our warehouse stuffed into a larger shipment of sporting goods that we ordered and were proud to sell. But the unscrupulous shipper with a twisted sense of humor and obviously harboring a grudge against us secretly included them in the shipment and not only charged us for them but refused to take them back. We have no other alternative but to try to get our money back by selling them, although we have no idea who would want to exchange perfectly good money for, the, for them. But who knows, there may be a few deinstitutionalized crackpots who will, who will blow eight bucks in a feeble attempt to suck up to the evil empire. I thought that was good coffee. Down below it says, these pants were made for cool dudes who frequent those clubs in the big cities. They were a big hit with the in crowd. But in a few months, the trend setters moved on to something else. And the maker had 512 pair that he felt he couldn't sell. Since our in crowd is always a few months behind, they figure <laughs> they would be just the thing from Pawtuck, Na Nashua, and beyond. All right, this is uh, t-shirts. And uh, I wanted to show t-shirts people wearing a t-shirt, but that's difficult to get models. So I went to the internet and copied out um, wanted posters of people. <laughs> and, and I showed it, and Jerry said, who are these people? And I said, they're people off of wanted posters. He says, well, we might get sued. And I said, not in, not in eight to 12 years, you won't. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is a, this is a fabulous story. <laughs> this, is, this is just, this is true. By the way, everything I'm telling you here is true stuff. I didn't make this up to be funny. We made these up to try to sell. Anyway, the pet guy comes in with these bird cages. And this was a particularly big bird cage. So I wrote, I wrote, with the cold weather coming on, your chickens will want to come into the house where it's warm. But you know how usually turns up. Feathers in the butter dish, corn all over the linoleum, and unsightly stains on the drapes. Why not give Henrietta her own private space and yet have her available for display when friends drop in? <laughs> These handy coops solve a, num a multitude of problems and come in a variety of styles. The pagoda, the fancy square, the arch, the house, and the ever popular barn, which is shown. At least one of these will coordinate with your own interior decor. When traveling, these portable pens are far superior to the canvas drawstring bags or the chloroformed hoods that have recently received such bad publicity. And don't forget to place her cage where Biddy can see out the car window. 
Paltry car sickness is never any fun. <laughs> so we publish this ad, and I get a letter from a lady in Weymouth that says, oh, that's, you know, you made fun of that, but a lot of people bring their chickens in the house for the winter. I do. And she left her telephone number. So I called her up and said, do you mind if we come over and take pictures? Now, what was the, I gotta ask Mary, what was the really lovely girl, the, she's a sweet young thing, and it was like her first week. I can't remember her name. She's, she's gone on to wonderful things. She's an executive now in real. Beautiful, slim, I, I'll look it up for the, huh? She worked in advertising, uh, well, whatever. She was a lovely girl, innocent as the, as the driven snow. And so I said, get your uh, camera, we're gonna go over and see this lady. So we go over there and sure enough, there's the lady, and sure enough, the house is full of chickens. Seemed like a nice lady, except the house was full of chickens. Now we come home with the pictures, and we had second thoughts. We said, no, if we put her picture in the circular and say that she lives in Weymouth, the health department may be over to her house, and we wouldn't want to turn her in. And if we didn't say she lived in Weymouth, people would recognize her and send the health corps over there. So we never put this in the paper, which I really felt bad, but I, I also feel that that's why her face is blocked out. In case anyone recognizes her, don't spread it around. <laughs> Jerry always very proud of being cheap, and here's Jerry pointing to his picture in the dictionary under the word cheap, so I thought that was good. I love to play with words, and here, these, this is awful. It says, you get moved for your money at Building 19 and not a lot of bull. We always have branded merchandise. Almost everything is about calf price. Holy cow, can you get away, how can you get away with this tripe? I can get it for you, Holstein, Building 19 like no other. Hey, you guys, cut it out. Took a lot of work, took a whole afternoon. Which, by the way, was the great part of being at Building 19. It, we, I went from teaching school, which is sort of a, a kid's job, I mean, a young person's job, playing with kids all day, trying to teach them math. And uh, then I went to a job like this, where Jerry, as I said before, was un, didn't leave us with any supervision. He only com complained about the ads on Monday when it was too late. So we had a wonderful time. Here's an example of one of the problems we had. People would say to me, you do those ads? I said, yeah. I said, oh, I love the ads. The ads are great. I said, do you ever go to the store? Oh, no, we'd never go to the store. <laughs> well, you know, that's a definition of a bad ad. <laughs> you can't get anyone to go to the store. Well, if that idea was, was good, we'll try it again. And one time, and this is Deadwood Ellis said, the man who's told Deadwood Ellis to his face, I always read your circulars, but seldom visit your stores. And of course, he's dead. This is the... Um, Evolution of retailing. Uh, the <laughs> now, Jerry went for many years with an all cash business, which yeah. give that some thought. <laughs> and finally, he decided somebody told him first it's probably illegal the way you're making out your income tax. <laughs> And, you, and it's too much of a, of a temptation to make it out the way you do. So why don't you, add, why don't you get people to bring credit cards? You'll make more money and you'll be more honest. So we did that ad to say that we uh, taking credit cards and we did this one, which is Grandpa Ellis ran up San Juan Hill saying charge, get it? <laughs> Again, in, in advertising, you wanna make the customer afraid of something. So it goes on to say that if you didn't take advantage of all these ads in this thing, you would lose $500. Um, oh, I gotta read this one. Now we do, you hear this today on the radio, that um, a perfectly good ad is on the radio and then it comes on with dis disclaimers at the end. They do it all the time and they also do it on television and it's really, really stupid. So we had to do one. Here's a picture of the, the salesman selling a refrigerator to an Eskimo. It's a bad joke. And, but the disclaimer is what we like the best. And we all 
Butler and O'Connor and I got together and we wrote this up all one afternoon. Official disclaimer from the Building 19 legal department and the legal firm of Dewey, Cheatham and Howe, Court Street, Boston. <coughs> it may be, must be published in conjunction with the subject matter in question. The cover of this magazine is meant to convey humor, wit and jocularity and is no, in no way to portray reality in any form. The author, the artist, the proprietor, and the employees of Building 19 Incorporated um, imply no disrespect to the great and powerful Inuit nation, native Arctic dwellers, Peter, people who eat fish rather than vegetables, salesmen, and those who live in igloos rather than in houses. <coughs> we mean no dis disrespect to other people's race, religion, sexual pre preference, sex, age, place of birth, food, physical appearance, disability, sports team, family, inseam, or automobile. And it goes on, he <coughs> explains the joke, but the part I, I like the best is says, and again, the disclaimer goes on for about 500 words. Uh, this picture portrays, uh, <coughs> um, what does it say? Incidents that have no, uh, precedence in reality and, and, and any likeness or similarity to the events and people portrayed living and dead are dead is purely coincidental when used in a conscientiously applied program of regular dental care and frequent use to the dentist. The invention pictures of this cover are the sole property of Building 19 and any reproduction or rebroadcast of these events is prohibited without the express written percent consent of Building 19 or the Boston Red Sox, whichever comes first. And it goes on and on and on. And on. So that's what I think about disclaimers. But people use them all the time. We also get ideas from the seasons. I, I can remember I would go to Jerry and say, well, what should we put on the cover this week? And he would always turn to the calendar and say, well, what's, the ca what's, the, what's going on? And whenever I did that, there was nothing going on. It was one of these things in the calendar. I wouldn't have asked him if it was the day before Christmas. You know, I would have, could have figured that out. So only time I would ask him is when there was nothing going on. Anyway, so we had to use the seasons. <clears throat> Here's a, a boy's, young man's fancy turns to thoughts of bargains, kind of corny. <laughs> this is a, a tribute to the income tax season. I'll give you a minute. <coughs> I'm gonna let you get it. Tell your neighbor the joke. You just share it with each other. The summer has all kinds of bad things. Sunburn, shock attack, sunstroke, barbecue, stepping on a jellyfish, giant clams, the Red Sox breaking your heart, bankruptcies. There's all kinds of terrible things that happen in the summer. Then this is uh, flu season or allergy season. And I spent all afternoon drawing this because I wanted to see if I could draw a picture of someone that sneezed. <laughs> That's fair. Holidays, another place. And this is, this of course is President's Day. And talk amongst yourselves and see if you can figure out which president is which, and then I'll tell you later. And I'm gonna quiz you, are you ready? Who is this one? Holler it out, just like it was at classroom. What is it? Jefferson. Jefferson is correct. Who is that? Nixon. Everybody got it. Who's that? Adams. Adams is right. Who's that? JFK. JFK. You're doing good. You're on a roll. Reagan. 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 It's too easy. What? George Washington. You know, George is buying an axe and some polydent. Everybody's got to get this one. Lincoln, you know who this is? Very good. This is the worst one. Clinton. Clinton. It's not. Doesn't look much like him. All right. Well, if that were. Oh, here's another holiday that we should all be aware of, and that's Mother's Day. And one of the things that we really hate, I can't stand, is the sappiness of Mother's Day. Mother's Day ads. So we wanted to go opposite that. And that's about as opposite as you can get. The mother is having him shot. While we go back to the presidents again, you, you know all these, well, you know this guy. Yeah, you do that. Oh, and Jerry used to buy table talk flats, they used to call them. Table talk pies that had fallen on the floor or something. <laughs> <coughs> they were flat, and, and he always had them in the early days of Building 19. And this time he had them, so we did them again. And we'll use those same guys again, and this is Mount Rushmore, and uh, Jerry is saying, don't forget President's Day, and these, they're all 
disgusted with him. But what I think is funny, we had a, Jerry came up with an idea, he says, why don't you put, you shouldn't have just cartoons on the cover, you've got to put features on the cover, what's inside? <coughs> okay, you're the boss. So it says, anthropologists discover life on Earth before Murray. Now Murray was the oldest guy that worked with us. Great guy. It says, single-celled creatures. <laughs> Now it says, is, here's some of the articles inside, like People Magazine. Can dogs be embarrassed? New study says no. Now, the thing is, it says page 10. There was really something on page 10 that had something to do with dogs, and I think it was costumes for dogs. <laughs> <coughs> the handicap that afflict, affl afflicts three out of five men cures even your doctor doesn't know. Next one. Bring a little craziness into your bedroom. We're selling goofy looking lamps. <laughs> <coughs> Backed by popular demand, an entire page of women's underwear. Viewers must be over 21. <coughs> there was an entire page. Back to school is a famous great holiday. And here's a second back to school, which I liked even better, the kids in a cage. <laughs> and I like the Charlie's Angels <laughs> lunchbox which for some reason I thought was funny. Um, and again, we go back to school. Back to school was a big time. And I, being a school teacher, I remember all this stuff. And you must remember also the kid that sat in front of you that went oof, 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 oof right? And the girl that says, I want my seat changed. <laughs> right? Now this has got a story that goes with it. Pretty corny, it's Halloween, so we draw a picture of a witch. Now I get a telephone call. Nice sounded lady, and she said, I really didn't like your cover that you put out. I said, you mean the Halloween cover? Yes, the one with the so-called witch on the cover. I said, yeah, it's Halloween. She says, you're making fun of my religion. I said, what do you mean making fun of your religion? She says, I'm a Wicca. I'm a witch. <clears throat> and I don't look like that. I don't have a tall hat with messy hair like that and a horrible face. I don't fly around on a broom. And I said, well, it isn't you. <laughs> Which I thought was a good answer. <clears throat> After that, very close to that day, they made Mary answer the telephone and they wouldn't let me answer the phone anymore. <clears throat> well, this is when uh, Obama got elected. This very, it was, it was, uh, what am I trying to say? Thanksgiving. So we did that. <coughs> we also try to take our tips from books and magazines, like the, uh, well, you have, you tell me, do you know what ma famous magazine I'm making fun of there? You'll give away your age if you know. <coughs> it happens to be the Police Gazette. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, and I'm not making fun. <laughs> Here I'm making fun of the supermarket tabloids. So we got blood sucking freaks, ate my wallet, says fancy schmancy stores, no fun anymore, says tubby TV star. That's Roseanne Barr. <clears throat> UFO lands in building 19 parking lot, tiny green men terrified bargain shoppers, aliens invade bargain store, prices are out of this world, screech drooling monsters. This I took the tip from Weekly World News, you remember that? where they just made up stuff and put it. Um, and as, oh, Madonna said, OJ nearly killed me. Trashy superstar reveals craving for orange juice added unwanted pounds. The one I like best though is this one. And we had a hot dog stand in building 19. And I, this was published and a telephone rang and it was the guy on the hot dog stand. And this is word for word the conversation. He says, hello. He says, I'm the guy that does the hot dogs in the Hingham store. Yeah. He says, I saw the circular this week. It says, man eats Billy 19 hot dogs and lives. I said, <laughs> I said, yeah. And he says, that's a joke, right? <laughs> How's it going? And I said, yeah. And he says, oh, okay. And hung up. I'll never forget that conversation. <laughs> what else? Oh, this is the worst thing. I've fixed it since then. But the first time we put this out, the, instead of do you drink too much coffee, 
it says, um, what did I say? Oh, monkey wins a Miss America contest. That's harmless, right? Except that was the week that the first black American won the Miss America contest. I didn't know that. This, this was done a week ahead of time. And needless to say, that hit the fan, and well, it should have. I, I apologized to her, and they said it was terrible, and uh, it said black six sugars, which is still there, because I wanted to say, do you drink too much coffee? <clears throat> but that was a terrible thing, and we apologized profusely, and she accepted it, which was really nice of her. I don't think she, they, and she probably shouldn't have, because it was a terrible thing to say. Um, this is a takeoff on the old Penny Dreadful uh, novels, dime novels that you used to buy at the turn of the 19th century. I enjoyed it, nobody got it. <laughs> this one you recognize. This is a, a takeoff on Maurice Sendak. And I drew all those pictures my very own self and I didn't trace anything. I looked at his pictures and tried to draw like him. And so, that week, we get the fat envelope from Murray Sendak Deck Enterprises that says, if you ever draw that, put that picture in the paper, we will sue you back to the Stone Age. So Jerry called me in and said, uh, you, is that OK with you? I said, yeah, but what do you mean, but? I said, I just put it in this calendar, and it's going to be on this. <laughs> How many calendars do we sell? It's about 25,000. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Murray never doesn't shop at Building 19, and he didn't buy the calendars. Um, come on. Oh, we get ideas from the movies. And this is take off in a very famous movie. And what would the movie star be? You people, are, there's an old guy in the back, yeah. <coughs> Rudolph Valentino. I showed this to Jerry, and he said nobody would get it. And he was right. <laughs> <clears throat> now, Jerry comes up with an idea. This, he, he drove me crazy. He said, I have a great idea. What we need at Building 19 is a mascot. We ought to have a contest to the customers to come up with an idea of a mascot, like a mouse or a ferret or an eagle or something like that. And I said, Jerry, Jerry, stop it. You're the mascot. No, 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 we need a mascot. I said, no, you are, the, the, the cartoon of Jerry is the mascot. No, we had a big argument. So <clears throat> I had to draw this showing that the Academy Award for the best mascot is Jerry. But what might be interesting is if you can talk amongst yourselves and recognize what the other mascots were. For. Take a minute, because some of these are really difficult, and one of them, you, I'll guarantee you won't get. If you get it, you win a, if you get the, other, the one that I'm asking for, you win a prize. <clears throat> okay? You holler it out when I point to it. Are you ready? You ready? Okay, we'll be easy. What are these? Smith Brothers is right. Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Speedy Alka-Seltzer. Quaker Oats, this one's going to be hard. Chef Boyardee. No. no. <laughs> Premium saltines. <clears throat> that was before. They don't use it anymore. <laughs> All right, here, what, what's this guy's name? What's the dog's name? Tide. Wow. Tide? How old are you? 90 what? 82. <laughs> okay. 82. <laughs> okay. The dog's name is Tide? And the young man's name is? Buster Brown, you did know that. What are these? Yeah. Campbell Soup, Soup Kids. <clears throat> the Tony the Tiger. Pillsbury Doughboy. Mr. Peanut. Charlie Tuna, who said that? Very good. What, are <laughs> what about these? <laughs> and this one, you won't get this one. Hawaiian Punch, very good. Pac-Man. Here's the one you won't get. Mrs. B from Bradley's. She was very popular at the time. <laughs> okay, here's another movie that you, I'm sure you recognize. I don't know. I never dated her. I don't know. <laughs> 
Uh, what do we got here? This is, uh, of course, Casablanca. And what movie is this? Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind, thank you. And what movie is this? Aha! Dr. Strangelove. Dr. Strangelove, who said that? Right over here, yep, he's good at this. <clears throat> we also took cues from television shows. <clears throat> now, this is a good one. Do you know who she's supposed to be? Yeah. Natalie Jacobson. Natalie Jacobson and? Dickie, Dickie Albert. Albert, who unfortunately just recently died. Well, <clears throat> I was really pleased with this because people did recognize him. And at that same weekend, Jerry sent me into Boston to the to Faneuil Hall for some charitable thing that I was supposed to rec uh, represent Building 19. So I go in, and all the big people are there. It's Chet Curtis and Natalie Jacobson. So I went over to Chet, who was a really nice person. And I said, uh, my name's Matt Brown, and I did a cartoon of Natalie on the circus. And he says, yeah, I know. He was good, cool. He's a great guy. And I says, is Natalie here? He says, yeah, she's over there. So I saw this tall one. By the way, Natalie Jacobson was tall. She was like six feet tall. And she's also covered in a mink. Gorgeous, impressive. So I go over to her and said, hello. <laughs> My name's Matt Brown, and I did a caricature of you for the Building 19 Circular, and it's out this week. Did you see it? And she said, yes. <laughs> And I said, I have to go now. Goodbye. <laughs> and that's all. That was my conversation with Natalie. <clears throat> and this is another one. So, you know who he is. Pat and Vanna, right? And so, here's Jerry on the Wheel of Fortune. And they have a puzzle that says, good stuff, Gene. So, we did it. Another day, we get the fat envelope from... The people that did, um, and I can't remember his name, the guy that came up with this idea. Merv anyway, Griffin. what is it? Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin, thank you. Merv Griffin Enterprises. And there again, they were going to sue us forever. And uh, we only used it uh, three or four more times after that. <laughs> because we figured Merv Griffin lives in California or the Bahamas. We don't have any stores there. So we're safe, and we were safe. <laughs> All right, what, this is hard. What, what did television show would this be? Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, that's good. Very good. I didn't think that, I thought that would be hard to do. And here's one, and I got to give you the names because I forget the names. <clears throat> Maybe you know the names and I'll tell you if you're right or not. <clears throat> Let's see. Who is that? Oh, -ho! her name is Carrie Ann Inaba. Right? Oh. And who is that? Oh, yeah. Who's that? Len. 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 What? Len Whitman. Oh, well done. Who said that? You said it very good. And of course, this is the hottest one. Oh. Bruno what? Bruno uh, Tognori. I think. I don't know. <clears throat> I like this. Uh, I drew this one when Letterman was on television, and the top ten, his top ten were on, and I, I, I would stay up to watch that. It was wicked funny. So the top ten reasons that you should shop at your neighborhood building 19. Number ten, a lax enforcement of the no shoes, no shirt, <laughs> no service policy. Number nine, you always see people you know, and they pretend not to see you. <clears throat> Number eight. No need to keep saying, just looking all the darn time. <laughs> free coffee, number seven, free coffee provides a welcome wake up beverage day or night. <clears throat> number six, of the 10 reasons to what am I, shop at Billy 19, the babes that hang out at the hot dog stand. <laughs> coming soon, number five, coming soon, free haircuts. Number four, I like this one. The free, hit, free ears pierced guy almost always washes his hands after visiting the restaurant. <laughs> Number three, the public address system is a good approximation of the voices in Ozzy Osbourne's head. <clears throat> Number two, I like this one too. The service, the service desk lady has new tattoos almost every week. 
And the number one reason that you should shop at your neighborhood building 19, three words, good stuff, cheap. Looks like John Dennehy. Huh? Looks like John Dennehy. <laughs> Don't get started. <laughs> I tried, and that was another thing I tried to do and failed, is to do a caricature of two different people. <laughs> that's really, that's not a good idea. It doesn't work. But I try it a lot. That's supposed to be Letterman and Jerry at the same time. Didn't work. Didn't work. We also make fun of television ads. Here's a television ad that says, um, ask, do, Jerry always figured doctors went to Building 19. I have no idea how he got that idea. <clears throat> but I know they always washed their hands when they left. Ask your doctor if Building 19 is right for you. He says, I'll ask him twice a week. And I was referring, of course, to Cialis. <clears throat> ah, it's a little sneaky thing there. But on the other hand, this one says, ask your doctor, doctor about shopping at Building 19. Surgeon is a cut above the rest. Take two credit cards and call me in the morning. You should always protect your assets. <clears throat> Psychiatrist says, Shop somewhere else, are you crazy? But the one I liked the best was the guy that said, if the excitement lasts longer than four hours, you should call everybody. <laughs> <clears throat> and that gives you some idea what the way we would do circulars. <clears throat> the circulars, and I think I've already told you this, but I gotta tell you again, it was, Friday was the difficult day. We had to get the thing done and off to the printer. And Jerry would always leave early Thursday. Uh, uh, Friday. <clears throat> so we'd get it done, wrapped up, off to the printer. Now, and it would be printed, published in the newspaper or out in the mail. And then on Monday, we would have a critique of the ad. And Jerry would say, it's terrible, every single time. I hate the ad, it's awful, it's not working. Uh, one day he said, do you realize that this week's ad was the lowest scoring ad we've ever put out? And I said, yes, I do realize that, Jerry, because this was the storm of 78 was on the weekend. <laughs> and we had four stores closed. <clears throat> and he said, that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> he had decided, he decided every Monday, either to be nice or not be nice, and it had nothing to do with reality. <clears throat> Some days he would just be critical, and other days he would, wouldn't be. <clears throat> My point is, uh, that doesn't mean it. The point is, he could have caught that if he wanted to. So we, we were really, I keep saying, uh, without supervision, we really could put in whatever we could get away with. And that's, that doesn't happen. Here's the, um, uh, what is that, the, what, the what, Energizer Bunny, Jerry. And we talked about sports. Now, there's one of the first headlines we put in the circular that was in Japanese. And that is actual Japanese for good stuff cheap. And we put that in there because of a famous person we put on the cover, this guy. Boy, this guy's good. Daisuke Matsuzaka for the Red Sox. <clears throat> and he had just come to, um, come to the Boston Red Sox. Um, here's a... A subliminal, what am I trying to say? A subliminal um, halftime talk. <clears throat> and here's what he's saying in those words. Jerry is giving, these are the store managers uh, of some of the stores, and just for Mary, I gotta say who I'm. That's, that's Dennis, uh, that's Gil, that's uh, Pat McNulty. And I don't remember the rest of them. <clears throat> anyway, the, the coach is saying, we're gonna, if we're going to close out this season with a surplus of losses, we're going to have to salvage this game by playing good football. I want you to stuff their running game and don't, let, any, don't even let them get any cheap touchdowns. So I thought that was cool. Then we had, I, I copied this picture out of a uh, New Yorker. I just love the the perspective. We have a, the expert in perspective with us this evening, and I always hear from him when my perspective is always off, <laughs> which is about every couple of weeks. So <laughs> anyway, was I, oh, now we did, we did a character, no, then we had no bull, which is, I'd like that, 
picture. And we got into politics. And of course, the, you, everybody knows who this is, the Berlin speech of Jerry and Reagan. That's supposed to be Jerry and Reagan at the same time, you know what I mean? He says, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this Walmart. And then, if you remember, <clears throat> back in 2012, there were seven different candidates, more than seven, but these are seven candidates for the Republican uh, nomination. And again, we're, this is going to be a quiz, so you may have to be quiet. You're going to have, you're going to know them all. But let's see what other people do. No, you can holler out if you want to. Um, Newt, John, aha, uh -huh. John, what? Casey. No. Harry. No. Warner? No. Huntsman. John Huntsman. Oh, Obviously, he didn't do very well. Yeah. <clears throat> Ron. Paul. Paul. Rick. Harry. Right. Yeah. Mitt. Ron. Everybody got him. Rick. Santorum. Santorum. And he's still around, unfortunately. <laughs> We're all still alive. <laughs> well, I don't wish death on any of them. Oh. <laughs> Here we are. This is it. We reveal the results of the election. We got Obama. We've got Sarah Palin. We've got um, Joe Biden and um, John McCain. The reason we revealed the results of the election is because we had a way of finding out beforehand. We would have these guys' pictures printed on styrofoam cups. When we gave away free coffee, we would collect the old coffee cups and find out which um, candidate used the most coffee cups. And it was never wrong. Never wrong. <clears throat> there's more about this later. We will, there's a couple other ads like that. <clears throat> What do we got? Oh, this is the inauguration. And these caricatures are not great, but there's a couple good ones. You won't get this because it doesn't look anything like him. That's supposed to be John McCain. You won't get this one. That's supposed to be. Oh, good. What about this? Clinton? That's supposed to be Hillary. Doesn't look like him. Sarah? Obama? This is a good one. I thought it was a good one. Bush, that's W. This is even better. Cheney. Cheney, you got it. How about this guy? Carter, still alive. George Bush, the senior, and not a very good cartoon. That's supposed to be Joe Biden, but it's not a good cartoon. You, you didn't do too badly. Consider, I, did, I didn't do so hard on that. And now he says, this is at the end of the 2012 election. He says, now back to something important, bargain shopping. Um, oh, this is, you'll get this one. We, we tried to appeal to millionaires. So there's all the millionaires I could think of. And um, you'll be able to get some of them. There'll be one I think you'll have trouble with. So we'll start with this. Who's this guy? Monopoly, Monopoly guy. Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck. He doesn't have a name, so you have to explain who this guy is. I'll explain. He's the guy from Esquire magazine from a long time ago. All right, this one. Richie Rich. Oh, I thought everyone would get that. John D. Rockefeller. OK, who is it? Who? Donald Trump. Oprah. Well done. Bill Gates. And here's the one you won't get. Citizen Kane. We got one coming up that has the most obscure caricatures you've ever seen. And if you get all those right, you should be up here. Because you won't get them. All right, we're, and here it is. I wanted to do a cover with obscure people on it that nobody would know who they were, but they would say, that's a good picture of them. <laughs> that's a hard target to hit. But I think I hit it in a couple of ones. Now you look at it, talk amongst yourselves, and see what we can do. There's only, in my humble opinion, there's only one real dog of a cartoon, and that's this one. It doesn't look like it. That's supposed to be Whitey Bulger, but it doesn't look like it. 
You can tell us why he bulls you, because he's stealing something. <laughs> but I, I think you'll do well with the rest of them. Well, I don't know about this guy. Anybody know him? No. Rom Abraham, the mayor of Chicago. He was, he was uh, Obama's... What? I still didn't. Rob Emanuel? No, this guy, this guy was, oh, was that was his last name was Emanuel rather than Abraham? Made a mistake. Who's this? No. No. What? No. All right, we'll give you one you know. Big Peppy. Hard. Good. William Shatner. Okay. This is a shock crowd. I didn't expect this. What is it? Celine Dion is right. You know this one. Menino, that's easy. <clears throat> this guy's in trouble now. No. He's, he, he's from the symphony, James Levine. Everybody knows this guy. Paul Pierce. De Niro. Conan O'Brien. Yeah, well, I forget his name. I always forget this guy's name. Um, the hell? Keep thinking. He's on television regularly. Yep. He will go right by that. Oh, God. We'll go right by that. What have I got here? Keep thinking. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to some more. Do you know who that is? That's Elena K Kagan, uh, Supreme Court Justice. Sean O'Connor. Sean Connery. What? Snooky, right. And nobody will get this guy, because I didn't ever know his name either. His name happens to be Michael Emerson. He was a spooky guy in the movie on television, Lost. He was a really creepy guy. You, you, you may remember what he looked like. He was really spooky. But nobody knows his name. So I was very proud of that. <laughs> all right. So and just so, here they are. Here's all your answers. That's what I was trying to think of, yeah. Um, I would say this one's bad, this one's bad. Actually, William Shatton is not too bad. Rom Emanuel. Not, uh, that's wrong. Okay. I'll, yes, I'll fix it. That's bad. Okay. We had different, oh, here's a promotion that we had. One of the very early ones. <clears throat> Jerry got these <clears throat> posters from the 1980 Olympics. <clears throat> and he said, let's make a contest out of it. He figured a way we could give out these as a contest. So I go back and start, so I, I did the bottom half of the ad trying to think what I should do. And then I came up with a great idea because I went home for lunch. I did all this part. And I went home for lunch and I saw Ed McMahon on television, that you might win a million dollars. So I came back and said, you may already be a winner. Look under the label. Be extremely careful. You may have won a million dollars to see what you've won. Be extremely careful and peel off the label. And those people thought they were going to win something, so they peeled <laughs> off the label and it said, I made you look, you dirty crook. You stole your mother's pocketbook. <laughs> And what's amazing is I never got a bad letter on that. Nobody <laughs> wanted to admit that they got fooled. <laughs> now, what, oh, this is one. Uh, this is a cover of uh, an ad that I really love doing, and absolutely nobody got it. It's, I went through a lot of research, bought an $80 book that, and didn't tell Jerry, that had um, all the numbers of all the players for all time, and. These are all the players that had number 19. Now, they're not all all stars. That's, that's all stars and a Hall of Fame. So we've got a couple Hall of Famers, Robin Jones, Dazzy Vance, Whitey Ford. 
Bob Feller. <clears throat> but the one that, had the, that did the worst was Mo Berg. Does anybody know about no, Mo Berg? No, we do. Mo yeah. Berg, huh? No, we didn't. He, he became a CIA operator. There you go. He was a CIA operator, and he went to play exhibition games in Japan, played for the Red Sox, went to Japan, played Japanese baseball teams, and took pictures of their, um, in their forts and stuff like that. So I thought that was really interesting. Absolutely no letters, nothing on this. Nobody thought this was interesting at all. Oh, except I got one letter that said that wasn't Bobby Thompson's number. But it was his number. Now, <clears throat> what have I got here? Oh, yeah. He says, if you have a cold in your nose, you can find your kid in the dark with these infants' rompers that glow in the dark. And there's a picture. There's a picture that I drew my very own self of what it would look like in a darkened bedroom with the kid in the crib with the glow-in-the-dark things. <laughs> and what is it? Okay. The other thing is the other ones we have had the nuclear sign on them, and there's no question why people wouldn't buy them. <clears throat> now, I had, I had a space to fill up, so I... I thought this, so I wrote about Miss Fuss budget, and I thought this was funny. It says, ask Miss Fuss budget public answers to your most private questions. <clears throat> says, dear Miss Fuss budget, is it all right to to um, give a gentleman friend a Christmas present that I bought at Building 19? <laughs> you know how people get so funny sometimes. I need to know, signed, Confused in Chelsea. And Miss Fuss Budget answers, Dear Confused, don't be a silly goose. Of course it's all right. Any boy would be proud to get a gift item from, building, your, from the building. Your friend will recognize that he has gotten more gift than as usual because of their low prices in New England guarantee. And if you put it in a grants box, he'll never catch wise. <laughs> He signed, he signed Carpe Diem, which means good luck. <laughs> signed Vera. Well, the Confused writes back, Dear Miss Fuss Budget, uh, uh, maybe you can read it this way. No, I can read it this way. Uh, but, what if, if, what if, but what if he um, wants to return and he, oh, I can't read this. He's a husky fellow, but I never knew, could figure out his size. He's got tiny little hands and great big feet. So, <laughs> so I shouldn't, uh, yeah, so maybe I should get him a book, but what if he's already read it? Or a golf club, but I don't know which one he already has. Um, I've only been seeing each other since October 7th, 2009. And she says, honestly, dear, you're a trial. <laughs> you must have heard of Building 19's No Hard Time Satisfaction Your Money Back Guarantee. They extend the time until January 30th. So if the gift's not perfect, give him the sales slip and he can go get cash for it. Which, if you play your cards right, he'll end up spang, spending on you. But don't let him take it back to grants. That's crooked. <laughs> Sayonara, which means stay loose. <laughs> All right. Now, here's a, another results from our Christmas, uh, not Christmas, our election poll with the, with the copies. And it was called the Building 19's Scientifically Valuable Coffee Election between Judge W. and Kerry. And we got the results in, shocking results. And of course, we wouldn't tell them in the cover. We, had, we want them to go inside and see what the answer is. Now, we liked people to subscribe to our circular, so this is an ad to encourage people to decide, decide to send their name and address in to subscribe to the circular. And it says, win a free live monkey to feed, to care for, and to dress up in Barbie's old clothes. <laughs> That's what some unscrupulous stores say when they really want your name for their mailing list. And when they get enough, they sell that mailing list to any and all who pony up the cash. We guarantee that your name will never be bartered to strangers when you sign up on our mailing list, and you won't be stuck with any filthy monkey either. <laughs> so, so it goes on. 
And I, I like the sign-up sheet because it says name, address, and then you have to check off whether you want roast beef, chicken, parmesan. <laughs> Well, here's another way, reason we wanted people to sign up for the mailer. We had first done this ad up here, and it says, if you don't sign up for this semi-prestigious mailing list, we're going to shoot this dog. <laughs> now, if you live in Situate, you know very well how, what people think of their dogs. It's, it, it's, if you want to die quick, make fun of dogs. <laughs> Well, people uh, absolutely went crazy. And they wrote letters, and I'll never go to your store. You're cruel and mean and awful. So I write back, and I don't think you can see this. Let's see. If you, you, that's too hard to read. But here's what it says. Attention do-gooders, this is just a cheap gimmick to get you to read the flyer. No better or worse than a horrible COVID, uh, commercial of somebody screaming, purple building. Remember that guy? Or oh, the voice of that guy from the basement. Do you remember that guy? He was a New Yorker and he talked about filing his basement. He was terrible. It was really a bad ad. <coughs> right after his ads, they went out of business. So be politically correct and don't write us any scathing letters because we'll just think it's funny. And besides, waste paper. What do you think? That stuff grows on trees? <laughs> Now, over here, I said, well, over here, I said, well, it turns out that a lot of people sent us letters saying that I was sick, and no wonder the American society is so low with television programs, movies, and ads like this one here. Of course, we apologize to those who took exception to our brand of humor, but on the other hand, it was our most successful request for subscriptions ever. <laughs> so, we then said, <clears throat> So now we're going to try something completely different. If you don't sign up for our mailing list, and we're sensitive to others' sensibilities, we'll set fire to this cartoon dog. <laughs> All right? So we published that, and it, but the, the copy that went with it said, now, understand what's going on here. That's a picture of a cartoon dog. Those are not real matches. It's a cartoon book of matches. <laughs> They won't catch on fire. And just like the previous ad, when we really didn't plan to shoot a hole in the picture of a cartoon dog, we couldn't. The cartoon pistol only shoots cartoon bullets. <laughs> we really don't, we really won't set the picture of a cartoon dog on fire, no matter how many people beg us to do so. So now you can safely read this circular without the fear that the picture of the cartoon dog will be harmed in any way. Just fill out the cartoon and send it in, okay? <clears throat> and you can predict what happened. Even more nasty letters came in. You're completely insensitive. I wrote you last week, you didn't even read it. Your people are awful, you're criminal. You ought to be in jail. So that's fine. <laughs> that's, now, Oh, this was when, when we, Jerry said, we ought to give away scratch tickets. And so we had a big thing on the front. Anybody comes in, can get a free scratch ticket. And we gave them. We had these all made up. And uh, a scratch ticket with the back of Jerry. And if you scratch one, it says lower. <laughs> scratch it again, it says lower and to the right. And scratch it again, it says, ah. <laughs> And you know, it was amazing the people that didn't think that was funny. <laughs> There's no prize. Um, oh, and then <clears throat> Jerry found a guy who makes uh, counterfeit breakfast cereal. Or he makes exactly the same breakfast cereal. It's left over from real Cheerios. And he can package it in any box you want. And you will go to many stores and see counterfeit Cheerios with their own box. So we figured this would be cool. I made up the box. We printed up the box and we filled it with Cheerios. And of course, we called them Jerios. And it went very well. It was a good ad. <clears throat> but we got letters. And one lady wrote in and says, I'm not eating any cereal that has Jerry waist deep in it. <laughs> Why don't you get another mascot, someone else to put on the cover. So we thought that was a good idea. So we had a contest, and we asked people to volunteer for the contest. And we would pick the top five, 
And one of the people that we did not pick no, um, was a guy that was in Jaws. And he had a speaking part in Jaws. He lived on Martha's Vineyard. And when I didn't pick him, we just picked these people at random because they thought they were kind of funny. We got a terrible letter from his wife was really mad at us. Turns out, though, he was an interesting guy, and his wife was a good kid, and we should have picked him. But anyway, here are the five people. We have Pat the Brat Piper, who was Roddy, Roddy, somebody Piper. The, the, the Rowdy Roddy Piper, right, the wrestler. And he wanted to take advantage of that. He was an obnoxious kid. And the old skater guy was really weird. He's like, how old does it say he is? He's, 80, he's in his 80s, and he um, roller skates everywhere. And he says, sign me to a Biggs Bucks deal playing the old geezer. Next we had Meredith and Missy, who in their synchronized swimmers from uh, Worcester, <coughs> Carol, the stay-at-home mom, and Miriam, the Navy wave, who was 87 years old and still could get into her uniform. <laughs> and so we picked them, and we went, we had a party over in Quincy, the Quincy Neighborhood Club, and it had a fascinating MC, the Glib Master Ceremonies. We had Danielle, do you remember Danielle? Danielle was a really good kid, but she thought she was a model. And she was normal in every way, except you, you, she, we would ask her to, to model these clothes, and she'd turn into a different person. And that's Danielle. And there's Mary, by the way. Stand up, Mary, for a round of applause. <laughs> that's Mary. Who is a, there's not much of Mary, but that is Mary. And uh, these are the five contestants. Turns out that Missy couldn't come, so they had a big picture of her and put her on. Anyway, turns out that Meredith and Mickey, Missy won the contest, and we had a new box made up, and it had Meredith and Missy on it, and it wasn't as successful as the one with Jerry on it. Which just goes to don't ever listen to criticism. Um, now what do we got? Let's see. Oh, some of our promotions didn't work very well. Here is the world's ugliest baby contest. Just send in a picture of your baby and you could win big money. Well, turns out people don't like that kind of competition. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the time, but it went nowhere. <clears throat> went nowhere. Bad taste. We've always been accused at Building 19 of having bad taste. And here's an example of bad taste. Time flies like an arrow. You can't make anything bad out of that. House flies like a turd. <laughs> I thought that was fun. Anyway, so here's some bad taste ads that we put together and got away with. Now, we're selling two things, hockey sticks and jock straps. So it starts off. Calling all hockey nuts. You need a strong professional model hockey stick with which to dispatch your opponents. And he's hitting a guy over the head. <clears throat> and nine dollars. And it says, calling all hockey nuts. And the doctor is saying, speaking of nuts, <laughs> today's young men would be crazy not to safeguard themselves and their future progeny by the proper installation and daily use of these comfortable, sanitary, and moth-proof athletic supporters. <laughs> Men, pick them out yourselves. Avoid the potential embarrassment of dealing with a helpful clerk. <laughs> What'll it be, hon? And uh, never mind. And what it says, American Athletic Supporter Institute reminds that athletic supporters are not just for violent sports like football and hockey, but also for baseball, basketball, soccer, and of course, ballroom dancing. <laughs> this is what I thought was funny at the time. is a picture of three guys standing on the street corner trying to figure out what the measurements were of a girl that's walking by that had just shopped at Building 19. Seems innocent. This came out the weekend that uh, Anita Hill testified. Oh. 
and we got huge amounts of letters how this is disrespectful to women and it objectifies them and the men were pigs and it's awful, people are awful and it's terrible. So one lady called on the phone, a lawyer called, and I said, all right, I got you on the phone, that's good, let's write the apology. But I said, you get apologies from phonies all the time when people say, I'm sorry if this hurt your feelings. That's, that's a phony apology. So we, I made up a cover with this lady whose name I can't even remember, but she was a lawyer and she was a nice lady, and she told me what to write. And that, it, it's, it's not, it's written by a lawyer, so it's not particularly funny, but it's, it's, a nice apology. We wrote a nice apology. And what I really was proud of is that we got a complainer that wrote the apology and we put it in the paper. I just thought that was a cool thing. Oh, here's another one that... Listen, I tried to make the crack as small as possible and it still didn't go over. It says, uh, oh yeah, pipeline about your hammer crack. This is a picture of Jerry dressed as a stripper and the announcer is saying, reminding to the people in the audience, it is not the policy of this institution to take 100% off. <laughs> and if that worked, we'll do another one. <clears throat> Jerry had weekends where he would have an ad called Jerry's Follies, where he put out all the really bad stuff he bought and priced them for nothing. So I had a great time drawing a picture of Jerry as a stripper in the old Howard, and the ball head row was in front, and uh, I just thought that was cool. Only the ball head row people knew what I'm talking about. Has, has anybody in this room ever been to the old Howard? One. <laughs> this is my favorite, and you'll have to bear with me because I love to read this. Now, <laughs> Jerry bought this videotape. And this videotape was a terrible videotape. It was the type of videotape that you see when you're in the seventh grade and the guidance counselor comes down and shows you should, should open the doors for women and you shouldn't punch a girl and you know things like that. But it was beautifully titled Secrets About Men That All Women Should Know. So what you want to do when you make an ad is you make it fascinating. Make people want to buy it, all right? So listen to this for copy. Miss Rita Lafon, star of stage, screen, and adult video, and state certified practitioner of psychic aromatherapy and gender-specific wellness, reveals all. This is the actual testimony from Mrs. Miss Rita LaFong, celebrity spokesperson, role model, motivational speaker, and all around good kid. She, quote, before I seen the video, Secrets About Men That Every Woman Should Know, I was just a housewife, dragging the kids to their soccer games and their dance lessons and rushing home to get dinner on the table before Rocco come home, Roscoe come home. Then a friend of mine lent me this awesome video and it gave me a whole new leash on life. Needless to say, today I am a powerful new age woman, successful beyond my wickedest dreams, in the bedroom and in the boardroom, if you catch my drift. <laughs> and Roscoe don't know what hit him. It's a picture of a girl, and that is the, that's uh, the it girl, what's her name? From silent movies. Thank you. What, say it again. Clarabo, that's a good picture of Clarabo. And I had to put the cigarette in because she didn't smoke. And Clarabo said, go ahead, it won't bite you. <laughs> Asking you to see the video and it says, now this is the advertisement part. We've had the testimonial. It says, after the International Obscene Contraband Act expired in 1998, these educational, quote unquote, videos lay in a Tijuana warehouse for five long years <laughs> until Brian Hickey, our traveling buyer who looks into things like this, rescued them for us. Now 742 broad-minded people will be able to purchase this amazing video and allow it to change their lives like it changed Rita's. After vis viewing this crystal clear, full color motion picture, with on-the-spot recorded sound of actual people doing unusual things in this saucy video, you'll ask yourself some questions. Like, 
Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> How do they get girls to do that? <laughs> and I wonder what it would look like if we ran it backwards. <laughs> well, needless to say, it was an absolute sellout. Except for the people that wrote in and said, you should be ashamed of yourself, Building 19, running a filthy video like that. You don't know whose hands it will fall into. It's terrible. I'm never going to go to your store again. You're awful people, and on and on like that. We also had another part at the bottom, and it says, absolutely none sold to children. Like cigarettes and cheap wine, explicit information is dangerous and should be kept away from minors struggling to escape the grasp of puberty. <laughs> Small children, sizes 4 to 14, wouldn't understand anyways. So we're asking our clerks to be constantly on guard for youngsters trying to smuggle this tape through the checkout without proper authority. And without, I might add, $1.98. <laughs> well, everybody wrote in and said that was really terrible. You should advertise trash like this. I'm surprised at you. And those are the people who wrote in. But the rest of the people came to the store and bought them. They sold out in a day. And the next day, they all came back. <laughs> Nobody ever kept one. They all came back, and we finally had to throw them all away. So, true story. Now, we, we really did win some prizes, and we did well um, on these things they put in the newspaper, say, which store do you like the best? We always came out on top. But what we didn't come out on top, we would run this cover. This is voted best. And at the bottom, it says, in 1948, I was voted best speller in Miss Gilson's seventh grade class. I know it was a long time ago, but it was a big deal then. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end. And we went out of business. Now, we went out of business on terrible circumstances. Jerry had given the business to his son. It's an old story. Son didn't want the business, so he planned for five years to go broke. And uh, he did, he, he, like a genius. He, was, he couldn't run the business, but he could run a bankruptcy like a star. And um, so he escaped without having to pay a lot of bills. He put 1,000 people out of work, and he stopped a lot of fun for a lot of people. He's one of the most miserable people I ever met in my life. But that's another story. We went out of business, and it was too bad. That was, me, that was the card that I sent to Jerry. And, and an ad that Jerry put in the paper, we're say, waving bye-bye. And that was the picture I sent to Jerry. And now this is an intermission, but I have stuff after intermission. But you can go home if you'd like, but I have more stuff to go with. OK. In 1984, a guy called up Jerry. His name was Mort Bernstein, and he worked for the um, lumber company, which was Grossman's. He was the vice president of Grossman's. And he said, you know that guy that does your cartoons? Send him down to me down here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I'm trying to start a business a lot like yours. And, and he said, send him down, and I'll have him draw some caricatures, show us how to do ads, and uh, it'll be good. He'll make some money, and we'll see how we do. So he sent me airline tickets, and I went down to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, that the Great White Way, <laughs> and he met me at the airport and put me to work, and we worked from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I flew back on Sunday. And they did caricatures of the people that he worked for and made jokes and told them about good stuff, cheap, and all that stuff. Now, 30 years go by, 30 years, and I'm watching the Red Sox play in Baltimore. And behind the batter, there's a green screen like this. And up comes the sign of Ollie's Bargain Outlet. And I said to Rosie, I drew that sign. I did that 30 years ago. So I looked him up on the, inter on the internet. And remember, when Billy went out of business, he said, to, when they closed down Building 19, he said, we couldn't compete with the internet. Jerry had 12 stores at one time. We couldn't compete with the internet. No one can beat the internet now. It was too difficult. Ollie's Bargain Outlet has over 250 stores. And so I called him, 
and said, we got to do some business. You know, I started with you. We did this. He said, sure. And he sent me some assignments. And I occasionally do pictures for Ollie's Bargain Outlet. And that's the closest thing to Building 19 in the United States. And this is what his circular looks like. Now, as we agree, they're a lot straighter than we used to be. I could never, because here's the thing. They work all over the United States, the Deep South, the Middle West. These jokes would have the, they'd come and burn the building down if we, we <laughs> so these jokes would never work. Anyway, that's what it, all these circular looks like. And the inside, he has similar stuff. And um, some of those pictures are mine. Here's a picture I just drew. This is when Ollie had bought uh, a lot of the Toys R Us stores. So I put that in there. And then they, there's another one with Toys R Us. There's some flyers that we send out we, it, in the newspapers. And I like this one. It says, don't <laughs> <laughs> never shop when shopping, never crazy, or whatever. And what else we got here? And then uh, Mary Ford, who lives over in Cohasset, called me up one day and said, would you like to do editorial cartoons? And I would love to do editorial cartoons because I've got an opinion on everything, and everything makes me mad, as you can notice. Everything drives me crazy. And um, the least little thing I, I want to talk about, want to make a big stink about it. So there's nothing better than this. When I was, well, go back 40 years when Martin Nolan, was it Martin Nolan, who was the editor of the Globe, and he lived around here. I sent him, a, and Zepp went to Harvard. He, went, he took a year off to go to Harvard. And I sent the editor of the Boston Globe <clears throat> a letter and said, I do the cartoons for Building 19, and I would love to do editorial cartoons. Would you, would you take any? He says, I'll take anything you want to send. That shocked me so much that I, did, I was so afraid of failure, I didn't make any cartoons, didn't draw any cartoons at all. And just stupid. And it's, it's, good, it's a good thing to tell kids that when an opportunity arises, you've got to take advantage of it. You can't worry about failure. You've got to see success. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm working for the Quincy, the, the uh, Cohasset Mariner first. And the very first cartoon I drew was one on election. And these two, these three candidates were running for election. And this is a complicated idea to understand. But if you have three candidates running for election, the people get two votes. We get two votes, at least we used to. In Cohasset, they get two votes. So you can vote for the two people you like best. But if you're inside politics, you, <coughs> your polit political guy will say, just give me one vote and blank the other one. That doubles your vote, by the way. That's called the bullet vote. <clears throat> it's tricky, it's political, and a lot of innocent people think it's bad. It's not bad. It's good. It's a very good thing. I didn't know that when I was on the Charter Commission and voted in situate to take the bullet vote out, and I've regretted it ever since. It was one of the worst mistakes I ever made. Because when you run for selectmen, you have to choose who you're going to run against now. And that's really a bad idea. If you have three candidates, they ought to run against each other. Five candidates run against each other. Not pick one person to run against. And, and what happens in situate today, we have one seat where there are three people running for it. We have another seat which is unopposed. It's really a bad idea, and I'm partially responsible for it. But anyway, <clears throat> I put this ad in and said there was obviously the bullet vote. And by the way, in Coasset, they never admit this. So there was enormous stink came out. How dare you think I would ever do this? The selectmen who were elected said the mariners should not be in the libraries. In, in. This is a terrible thing to say, and he raised hell over it. But finally, they changed their mind. Because one of the selectmen, Mrs. Uh, what's her name? M Mrs. Quigley, no relation to acting Chief Quigley, she was desperately opposed to this guy. And I made some cartoons that said it's time to choose acting Chief Quigley and make him chief. He's been acting chief for three years. You know, or fire him, do one or the other. Anyway, they made him Chief Quigley, the lady got crazy, and she resigned from the. Uh, <laughs> And it has never been heard of since, which is a good thing. And uh, 
What else we got? I also ta like to take uh, cartoons about the drug crisis. It's very complicated. You have to look at this six or eight times. <clears throat> it says that you can have OxyContin that is $150 a day if you go to a doctor. You can have the same effect for $20 a day if you try heroin, and you can get a death certificate for free. <clears throat> and I want, wanted to say that it was dangerous. But I also, there's other drugs I don't like. And that one of them is Adderall. As a teacher, I am opposed to it. Now, there are people, good kids, who have problems, ADHD, who need to take this. Some kids really need to take it. And it's prescribed by real, honest doctors. And that's, I don't argue with that. But there are um, unscrupulous parents, much like you we've been reading about in the paper, who know that Adderall is a way to help your children score well in school. It's, uh, it's a drug that's overprescribed and is habit-forming to children. So I wanted to say that. And I showed the, um, you notice how it's not fun anymore? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, I said OxyContin sales award on the top, and it was selling the thing to the kid. He says, he'll get on the honor roll in a jiffy. Well, the doctors, a whole bunch of doctors, wrote a letter to the newspaper saying this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, he's a terrible person, he's, he's taking a vital drug away from people who have real problems, and I don't trust those bastards. That's as far as I want to go with that. This was funny because I could make the, the Army Corps of Engineers one came to, to um, Cohasset and said they were going to dredge the, the, the uh, harbor and never got around to it. But I love the, the words, don't be rotten to the core. I had to show that. <laughs> um, this is the classic, uh, we talk about scams for the elderly. It's a scam that your grandkids will play on you if you're not careful. And uh, they don't tell mom and dad, but I need extra money for lab fees. And uh, please send it to me. And they send it and they, they have a wonderful time that weekend. Anyway. Over in Cohasset, there's a place called St. James Island. And uh, St. James Island is where all the millionaires live. And a new millionaire moved in and had bought a huge piece of property and wanted to build a huge house. And the other millionaires didn't want him to build it because it was in bad taste, even though he owned the, the land. And so they went to the selectmen to prevent him. They said, no, he's got every right in the world to build on his own property. They went to the zoning board. They said, no, it's zoned. You can do whatever you want in your own property. And then finally, oh, they hired lawyers to try to keep him from building on his property. But finally, they went to the last resort of all people in small towns, the Conservation Commission. And here's the primary uh, <laughs> principle of of conservation. No millionaire should have to look out and see another even more wealthy millionaire's house. So this caused an enormous turmoil in, for Cohasset. And finally, the, the, the big millionaire decided he would sell the property at a, at a terrible low price to the town of Cohasset. It was beautiful property, worth a couple million dollars. And the town of of um, Cohasset could buy it for a measly 300000 providing there's only one parking space on the property. So the people that paid for it out of their tax money could visit this property one person at a time. <laughs> <laughs> now, needless to say, Cohasset, unlike Situate, was smart enough to not go for that deal. Then I started to work for the Situate Mariner, which was fun because I came to Situate at the time when we had a miserable town administrator. Now, what's happened here? Anyway, what? Bobby, wait a minute, maybe a. Should be up. Should be up. Almost through. There it is. <coughs> Mara Curran uh, just got elected. And this, this was drawn when Mara Curran got elected. And I have her coming into the wild animal cage, which the then selectmen <coughs> were all pretty well taken care of by the town administrator. And the question was, would Mara fall in line with the current selectmen, or would she be a rebel? A rebel? And it turns out, I think she fell in line. Because 
Not long after she was elected, she gave this miserable town administrator. And by the way, that's not my just my opinion. There's a lot of people in town that real finally realized that this woman was really, really bad. She, I'm not saying she was criminal, but she was mean to people and mean to employees, and she was not a good person. Anyway, as soon as Murray came in, she voted for a three-year uh, to extend this town administrator's contract for three years. Town administrators should have one year at a time. That's the deal. That's the way you have town administrators and keep them on, the, on the, their toes. I don't care how good he is. They get one year at a time. They gave him three years. And there's a picture of the town employees in the, in the, the uh, whatever you call it. And there's the selectmen flying off in the Needless to say, that wasn't taken very well. But this one raised a lot of hell. <laughs> I took, uh, a friend gave me a list of all the people that had quit the town hall. And I had the Vincisi Memorial. Uh, all had left town employment in the past few years. The selectmen decided that I, not only was I criminal, but unpatriotic and uh, hated veterans. And I immediately said I spent more time in uniform than all the selectmen put together. And uh, shortly after this, this ad, which was not well received by the town administrator or the selectmen, she resigned which I really feel, felt good about. And so the selectmen had to find a new town administrator. And he's, these are the people that they're interviewing. The Joker, Captain Ahag, Hitler, Dot Vader, the Penguin, a Yankee fan, the devil himself, Nixon, and Fu Manchu. These are, these are all the villains of, that we, I could think of. I'm almost done. We also have a, um, the, um, Heritage Days in Situate, which some people like and say, some people don't. And here's an example of the reasons that some people like it and the reasons that some people don't. And it turns out that those reasons are the same for both people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to read it and see what it's about. And so that's a good example of an editorial cartoon taking no sides at all. <laughs> it's, it's not an editorial. And of course, situate we have brown water, <coughs> so we did this ad a long time ago. It's delicious, it's nutritious, it makes you feel ambitious. <coughs> Every situate's favorite beverage. Tongue teasing vitamins and palate pleasing minerals direct to your faucet. Anyway, it goes on and on. Well, I'm almost done. What else? Oh. One of the things that I talked to my friend Zepp when he lived in Situate, and he said the, the editorial board of the Boston Globe told him, you, may, you are not allowed to make any more than three cartoons a year criticizing the Catholic Church. He said, because no matter what you say, we get the most anti-Globe mail when you do that. So you only can do three a year. And for a small newspaper like the Situate Mariner, I didn't think I'd be able to get away with it. But I was outraged that St. Mary's of the Nativity in their bulletin recommended that this parishioners vote for Trump. And if that, and it, well, that, they did that. And so I say that St. Mary's of the Nativity should be taxed like everybody else. And there's another thing I did, and here's, I, I grew up a Catholic and I was always accused by fellow Catholics are being a cafeteria Catholic. You take what you like and you leave what you don't. Well, here's three Catholics going to the nun and to the priest and to the Monsignor. And he's refusing the baloney that the Monsignor is passing out. Now, I'm not just anti-Catholic. I'm anti-Protestants, too. <laughs> There's the, uh, this is a case that happened in Cohasset, the first parish church of Cohasset wanted a person whose house fell down right next to him. They did not want him to repair it because it wouldn't be in the same taste as the other houses on Cohasset Common. And they raised hell about this, and I'm proud to say that they finally came around and shut up, and the person was allowed to repair his house. Um, I don't know if I have any more. Let's see. Oh, this is good. I like this cartoon because they didn't say anything. 
<clears throat> there's no words, there's nothing. You either know what this is about or you don't. And that's my idea of an outstanding editorial cartoon, if I do say so myself, where you don't label anything, you don't know, unless you know that what he's talking about, you don't know who the people are, you don't know what's going on. And only a certain amount of people know what's going on. And that, by the way, was a theory I have, and I've never heard it from anyone else. The best joke is a joke that only half the people get, because the people that don't get it just shake their head and say, I didn't get it. The ones that get it say, oh, that's clever, because they're smarter than the ones that didn't get it. And they can lord it all over them. And they can say, you mean you didn't get that? Everybody gets it. Oh, that was a great joke. It's, that's the way people are. So the vaguer the joke is, more inside the joke is, like George Washington and Napoleon did. Only a few people saw that. But they loved it. They, they mentioned it. But that's all right. If, if you tell a joke and not everybody gets it, that's the way it ought to be. That's why I like this particular thing. I don't know what else we got. Oh, obviously I'm against the senior center because I don't think we, I think it's too expensive and that was my uh, argument. There's arguments on both sides, obviously, but uh, that was what I said. And I say that here it is 20 years from now or it'll be closed down. And, but here's something that, re that I'm really upset about, and that's the CPC money in situate goes to only three, it's made to go to four places. Low and moderate income housing, recreation, historical uh, uh, sites, and to buy open space. And we've done well in situate for three of them, but we haven't done anything for low and moderate income housing. And we are trying to now use CPC money to buy playing fields for the school. And in order to do that, we're going to put CPC out of business. We're going to take all their money, and we're going to put it in debt for years. So all the money that will come out of your taxes to go to CPC, these four different ideas, will only go to the playing fields of Situate. And I think that's rude and wrong. I don't agree with that. For instance, the clever selectmen, they wanted to put in um, I'm almost done. It will be funny later. <laughs> they wanted to put in a, um, a sidewalk. And so they took CPC money, which is not available for sidewalks, and they called the sidewalks trails, recreational trails. Well, they're the farthest thing in the world from recreational trails, and the Attorney General agrees with me. But they put them in, and they put them in badly. So in the middle of the sidewalks, there's telephone poles, because they didn't want to move the telephone poles. So not only did they do it illegally, they did it badly. If you're going to do something, you either do it illegally and good, <laughs> or you don't do it. If you're going to break the law, you may as well go whole hog. And Anyway, that was my opinion on that. Oh, but here's, this is, and we're done, so you can relax. This was my most popular cartoon of all. Jamie's um, restaurant burned down in North Situate, so I showed a graveyard with all the other Situate restaurants and put it on Facebook and got a couple hundred people said that they loved it and they talked about the restaurants and they went on and on and how they loved Jamie's and they loved all these others and Pier 44. And it was, I really, I didn't expect it to be that popular, but it was popular and I was very pleased. And it wasn't negative and miserable like my cartoons tend to be because when you do it, and this is my last, when you do an editorial cartoon, unlike doing cartoons for Building 19, where you have to be foolish and si silly and zany and make jokes and be lighthearted and all that stuff. When you do editorial cartoons, you've got to find fault. You, nobody ever did well as an editorial cartoonist by saying, isn't our things wonderful? We, why don't we support our selectmen? Go to church every Sunday. <laughs> Drive carefully. Uh, th 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 these are terrible editorial cartoons. You've got to be mean to people, and, and that's why everyone got quiet while I was talking about that. Anyway, thank you for your kind attention. Are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs>